Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly pop culture wrap up. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is the weekly pop culture wrap up. It's the show where I go over the week's pop culture news. Mostly comic books and movies, but first, I want to invite you to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps us out. Anyway, back on with the wrap-up. Planet Hulk Worldbreaker, issue number one, debuts in November from Marvel Comics. This will be written by Greg Pak, with artwork by Manuel Garcia. It will be a five-issue miniseries. Now, unlike things like New Fantastic Four, or Venom Lethal Protector, or Wolverine Patch, this is not bringing back a former creative to to revisit their time on the title. That's not what this is. This is actually looking a little bit ahead. So this title is set 1,000 years into the future. There are people still on the planet Scar, which is where the original Planet Hulk took place, and they are looking for a new messiah. They are looking for the Hulk. Is the Hulk there, or have they found Morgan they bargained for? I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait till November. I really like Planet Hulk from Greg Pak and company. I thought that was a really cool gladiator meets Hulk type event. And when you really kind of think about what are some of the top tier Hulk related stories, it's one of the first ones to pop in mind because there's not so many Hulk-centric stories that have that much of effect on the Marvel uh, Universe. I almost said Marvel Cinematic Universe. Look how they're training us. Anyway, that debuts in November, and I'm excited that they're bringing Greg Pak back, the original writer, to revisit or to revisit by way of the future this classic story. Then we got Deadpool debuting in November, a brand new number one, a brand new ongoing series for the Merc with the Mouth. It's been a while, a few years possibly, a couple years since Deadpool's had an ongoing series, so it's kind of felt like there's been this big gaping hole in Marvel's publishing line, but have no fear. Deadpool is back as of November, but it is going to be written by Alyssa Wong with artwork by Martin Cocolo. Um... Mark Cocolo is currently the one who's doing the art on the Banner vs. Hulk story, I believe, so that's cool. Alyssa Wong, I haven't read too much that I really like from her, so me not necessarily being the hugest Deadpool fan on the solo book, and me not necessarily being the hugest fan of Wong's work, I don't know how I'm going to respond to this, but I'll definitely check it out when it debuts in November. Thanos, Death Notes is a new one-shot comic book from Marvel in November. This one will be written by a plethora of writers, including J. Michael Straczynski, and it will be illustrated by a plethora of artists, including Ron Lim. Of course, there are some other people that are going to be tied into this. This is a one-shot comic book that I feel will be filled with a bunch of short stories from Thanos' past. It's supposed to be tied into events of Thor, Donny Cates' Thor in particular, with this whole vision that he had at the beginning of that run of Thanos with, like, Mjolnir, and it has all the Infinity Gems on it and something like that. So this isn't setting that up so much as it is apparently Thor going into Thanos' history to try to uncover the mystery about his vision. So it seems like a one-shot comic book with a bunch of different people doing a bunch of different Thanos stories. Is it going to be important? I don't know. We'll definitely talk about it when it debuts. Another one shot from Marvel is going to be Black Panther Unconquered in November, written by Brian Edward Hill with artwork by Alberto Fochi. Um, this is one of those one shot comics that's always released around the time that there's a movie. So there's a Black Panther movie coming up in November. So they're dropping this one shot. It's just designed to be a new reader friendly one shot comic book. Someone can walk up into the shop and be like, hey, I just watched this Black Panther movie. I want to see some stuff and you can guide them to this one issue. Unfortunately, those stories aren't usually that strong and compelling and engaging. However, with Brian Hill being the writer on this one, that would be it's more interesting to check out. But most of these kind of one shots they do when the movies release, they don't really add up to much. Murder World Avengers is a new five-issue series debuting for Marvel in November, written by Jim, Zug and, uh, Jim Zub and Ray Fox with a bunch of different artists on each different issue. Yeah, I don't know why, but Marvel decided they arcade needed his own book. At least it's just a miniseries. I don't know. There's so many other books that could be published by Marvel right now. Blade, Night Thrasher... You know what I'm saying? So many other books that could be published by Marvel right now, and they're giving Arcade 
his own book. And they don't even want to call it arcade and call it what it is. They're doing Murder World because it sounds cooler, I guess. Murder World Avengers. So they're tying it into the Avengers franchise. I don't know. Honestly, I don't really care. I'm not that excited. In fact, the only experience of mine in my life where I've ever liked arcade, whether it was a comic book or a movie or a cartoon or anything, was that Super Nintendo game. Arcade's Revenge. I really, really like that game. Anyway, the book could be cool. We'll definitely check it out when it comes out. Um, we also got a one-shot from DC. It's Jon Stewart, The Emerald Knight. That's going to be launching in November. Just a one-shot written by Jeffrey Thorne with artwork by Marco Santucci. This is, I guess, the coda to Jeff Thorne's Green Lantern run. Now, Jeffrey Thorne did a 12-issue run on Green Lantern, if I am if I remember right. And he did some work on the Future State book, I think, right before that. Like, two issues before that. But he did this big, awesome kind of build-up and this big revelation at the end of... of John Stewart, like, inheriting this new power or or evolving into this new form, this new this new Emerald Knight or something. And then the series ended and we just have never heard anything else. Now, I know that this series was meant to, like, keep going, right? But it seems like it's just been relegated down to this one shot. I hope that this sets up more to come. And maybe this is just a bridge between that Green Lantern run and into the death of the Justice League, which happened months ago, and into Dark Crisis, which is happening right now. I don't know how this timeline's supposed to work, but don't worry. It's an omniverse, Robbie. Don't worry. It's an omniverse. It's an omniverse. Anyway, I'm really excited for this because I liked Thorne's Green Lantern run. It had a lot of cool concepts. It was trying to do something different. And I'm really excited to see what this is. And hopefully it's not just a, let's wrap this all up and leave it alone. Hopefully this is a stepping stone. But we shall see. Traveling to Mars is a new one debuting in November from Ablaze. Written by Freshly Eisner Award winning uh, Mark Russell. And illustrated by Marco uh, or my bad, R uh, Rambert, uh, Roberto uh, Melli. Um, so this one is about a dude who is going to Mars. He's the first human on Mars, but the, he's a former pet shop owner, right? And the reason why he's been picked to be the first one to go to Mars is because he's like terminally ill, has nothing to live for. And so they send him in case he can't make it back. There's no need for him to come back. Sounds kind of depressing. Um, but he's there alone on Mars with these two rovers who start to view him as kind of like their god, uh, or at least their artificial intelligence does. That sounds pretty neat. Sounds like it could be depressing. Sounds like it could be satirical. Sounds like a Mark Russell comic book. So I'm rather excited to check that one out. And then we got Once Upon a Time at the End of the World. That is a new book from Boom by Jason Aaron. Nothing officially announced yet. This is a tease for the upcoming announcement on Monday. So keep your eyes peeled on Monday for the announcement of the new Jason Aaron Boom book. They, they're they trying to, they're really trying to capture that hype again uh, with Grimm and, and, and Once in Future and Something is Killing the Children. They're trying to find, they're still trying to find their next Something is Killing the Children, let's be honest. And they're hoping Jason Aaron's got something for him. Anyway, that announcement for that book, which is called Once Upon a Time at the End of the World by Jason Aaron. Anyway, that's what we got for you this week. What's coming up here at PCP? Check us out over Dylan's Horror Show tonight. Uh, what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about the Mortuary Collection. Um, it's a Shudder exclusive anthology horror film that I watched just last night and actually was rather surprised by it. So it's going to be an interesting conversation. Then we've got Rock and Robbie Live Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. And then we've got PCP Movie Night concluding Action Fest 2022. That's going to be Monday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. We're talking about all the TMNT movies. We're talking about the original. We're talking about Secret of the Ooze. We're talking about Part 3. Then we're talking about TMNT the animated film, because that's dope, and even the Michael Bay produced ones, which I had just watched for the first time, and I got lots to say. Anyway, so join us for those. Dylan's Horror Show tonight, 8 p or 6, 30 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, Sunday night for Rock and Robbie Live, 8 p.m. Central Time, Monday night for PCP Movie Night. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out the video. What are your comments? Let us know in the comments down below anything you think about what we talked about today, or maybe anything else. doesn't matter. Just comment below. It really helps us out. Anyway, I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Station, pop, pop, boom! boom.